Hey everybody, welcome to Tutor Terrific. If you've reached this video, you've reached the first in a series of physics videos that could work as a sort of honors level or rigorous high school physics course or an entry level college physics course. And we're gonna go through an overview of all of physics in this series, and it's gonna be a quite long series because it's a whole course. Um, I'm gonna break it up into chapters, and it's not based on calculus. So this is a non-calculus based uh, physics course, if you will. So. The first thing I want to discuss with you is what physics is, because that's a big question a lot of people who are beginners to this science ask, what is physics? So we need to go over that. There is physics in every part of your life. Everything you interact with, physics is going on all around you. So consider this guy strumming a guitar. So there's lots of physics in this picture. We've got the strings. When he plucks the strings, they vibrate. And damping occurs. Uh, which uh, lowers the amplitude, the sound of the vibration, which uh, vibrates out in all directions. We've got a sounding board and we've got a sounding chamber that amplifies the sound. The fact that he's able to hold the guitar up and it's not falling and he's not falling through the floor is another example of forces in physics that we're going to study in this course. So there's lots of physics going on in this picture as well, in this scene. We've got um, a balance of forces here, the tension in the string. Um, balancing gravity and balancing friction, um, creating a nice smooth uh, trajectory for this guy as he uh, uses the wind to kite surf his way to a wonderful day. Um, we've got some viscosity, which is a uh, fluid type of friction between the board and the water. We've uh, got uh, buoyancy, which allows him to stay afloat above the water. And we've got air resistance, which is the whole reason he can even kite surf at all. And in this picture, at the uh, volcano, the eruption, you could see that the uh, lava pieces are flowing in parabolic paths, upside down parabolas. We've got uh, the fact that some of this lava seems to be flowing downhill um, with the help of gravity, and it seems to take certain paths down the hill, which um, are interesting. It's definitely a physics phenomenon as to why they take certain paths and not others. Um, the fact that a different type of particle, the smoke, is actually uh, buoyant in the air and floats in the air at a certain altitude. Um, we've got uh, the radiation, uh, the black body radiation from this super hot uh, molten lava. And the hotter it is, the, uh, the brighter it is, and the closer to the blue end of the spectrum, the, the light frequency is. So there's plenty of physics in that picture as well. And of course, a classic model of the sun and earth here we can see that the sun is very radiant. It's actually a plasma, which is a fourth state of matter in which the uh, electrons and uh, the nucleus are completely disassociated. Um, lots of photon radiation here. We've got uh, the fact that the sun and the earth are connected by gravity. Um, we've got the shadow behind the earth here. Um, and the earth itself is a wonderful phenomenon in physics. The fact that we're even alive on this earth and we're a certain distance from the sun and everything's pretty stable. We've got all the other stars, which of the sun is one type. It's just the type that we are gravitationally attracted to and in an orbit around. And uh, these other stars are just like the sun. They're just a lot farther away. They're so far away that uh, we're seeing them in the past because it takes light several tens to hundreds to thousands of light years to reach us. And so this is uh, plenty of physics going on here, mostly bound by gravity. And of course, there's nuclear fusion going on in the sun as well, which fuses hydrogen atoms into a helium nucleus. So, back to the main question of what physics is. I want to make that very clear to you. There's two definitions of physics. One that's less formal, and one that's a lot more formal. So, um, here's an informal definition of physics. The study of matter, energy, and how they are related. Very simply put, that's a good definition of physics. The study of matter, which you learned about in chemistry, if you've already taken chemistry. Energy, which you're gonna learn a lot more about in physics. And the relationship between those two uh, content ideas. They're very large categories of things to study. And so we're gonna study both. Mainly, we're gonna study the relationships between both. Forces, of course, play a huge role in that relationship. All right, now the more formal definition of physics is this. The study of the set of principles that govern the properties and interactions between matter and energy at all scales in our universe. 
So it's a set of principles, okay, set of laws or theories. And I'm going to go through those types of truth terms in a later slide on this lecture. But um, we're going to look at a set of all these principles that govern interactions and properties between matter and energy at all scales, down to the subatomic scale, all the way up to the scale the size of the universe. There are principles that govern how things interact with each other and the properties they have. That's another more formal definition of physics. All right, now, if there's one thing you learn in science that you do not forget, it would be the scientific method. The scientific method. There are lots of versions of the scientific method. My method has six steps, okay? Step one, when you are engaging in this method, is to determine a question that needs to be answered, and then ask that question. If you just hypothesize, oh, maybe that'd be interesting to study, but you don't actually ask yourself the question such that you want to answer the question, you're not really engaging in the scientific method. So that's step one, to really ask that question. Now, first, before you do, to go straight to the experiment, no, you, there's many steps before that. First, you want to conduct background research. You want to see if anybody else has already answered that question. And if no one has, or no different groups of people have their own answers to the question, you want to research how other people have investigated the problem or similar problems to get some extra information before you go to the next step. Based on your research and your question, you're going to establish a hypothesis, which is a proposed answer. Your hypothesis will try and answer your question based on your research. Then, once you get to the hypothesis, you will devise and conduct, step four, an experiment to test your hypothesis. You want to see if your hypothesis is true. You're not assuming it's true. To assume your hypothesis is true without testing is bad science. So you definitely need to set up an experiment. You don't just do the experiment and say, oh, I figured it out. You have to analyze the data from the experiment. In physics, your experiment should produce data that you can analyze. It's the data that matters. So you need to set up a system that can analyze that data and figure out how it pertains to your question. Once you've analyzed the data, you'll be ready to draw, last step, step six, a conclusion. Now your conclusion would best be served by being communicated through you. So you want to communicate your conclusion in a way that others can understand in a research report, a lab report, or formal paper in a scientific journal, or a presentation at like a TED talk. You want to communicate your conclusions to the scientific community and the world. That in itself, those six steps are the scientific method. So as some of you may know, I like to drag race. I like to um, build cars for racing. And um, back in 2015, I conducted an experiment with my car. I had taken it to the track and I had um, run a time just after I built the car. I built the head, I worked on the suspension, the transmission, I tuned the car and I wanted to uh, do really well at the track. So my first time at the track since the build is in this video and uh, we're going to check out how I did. My first drag race day since the car was built. Drag racing, for those of you who don't know, it's a quarter mile single shot. The reaction time at the green light matters, and your lapse time and speed at the other end matters. So, it's hard to see, but I actually got a 15.413 second elapsed time with an 88 mile an hour trap speed. That's how fast you're going at the other end. So, I of course wanted to do a lot better than that after all the money I'd spent, but that was my baseline result from that first day of drag racing. So immediately as a racer, I asked the following question, how can I go faster? Okay, and um, I really wanted to go faster after all that money I built. Maybe a few tweaks or one tweak in particular would make a difference. And so if you notice on that car, I've got some interesting front wheels. I've got some drag radials on there. The wheels are quite heavy, uh, but the drag rails are quite sticky. However, the wheels weren't very, um, they weren't per perfectly round. So. We're going to study angular momentum and learn how that can be a problem for you. What I did is I went to um, a very famous website for people who have this car. It's cb7tuner.com. It's a forum where people can go to learn about their car, 
S watch and uh, see how other people document their modifications of the car and ask questions and interact with this community of people who love this car. And so I learned quite a bit about what I could do. And so I established a hypothesis. A really simple idea is to put the uh, stock sport wheels that I bought as a set of four back on the front with the uh, sport tires, and uh, which are a lot lighter than the drag radials over here with those giant wheels. And I was going to see if I could reduce my time um, 0.413 seconds. That would take all that time in the 15 second uh, lapse time away and bring me down to the point where I could break into the 14 second range. That was my goal. Then it was time to conduct the experiment to test this. So in August of 2015, I went back to the track and I uh, did another run. So let's check out what I did. Remember, I didn't change anything but the front wheels and tires. Alright, 1528, uh, 89 miles an hour. So, let's analyze this data. It appears as though I reduced my lapse time, but by less than 0.2 seconds, not the desired 0.413 seconds that I wanted or more. And so, while I did reduce my time, I didn't reduce it by the amount I wanted. So, my conclusion is this. While um, putting on the stock tires and rims on the front wheels does reduce the elapsed time by a significant amount. It did not reduce the elapsed time by the desired 0.413 seconds or more. So more research and work has to be done to determine what can be done to reduce the elapsed time by the desired amount. That is a formal conclusion. This guys is an example of using the scientific method. So let's discuss now the truth terms. In physics, we use quite a bit of these. And if you've taken geometry, which you should have before you uh, try physics, uh, you learn quite a few others like conjecture and theory and things like that. Model is a very important truth term. It's an analogy or mental image of a phenomena in terms of something more familiar. So it's trying to, if I use the verb form, model a phenomenon in real life. A theory, something also used in physics and all sciences, is a more broad and detailed um, statement that gives quantitatively testable predictions. You can test a theory because it has measurements involved or it can be tested using measurements. A law is a concise but general statement about how nature behaves and it's stated as a relationship or an equation. So it's more general than a theory. And then lastly, a principle which is even more general than a law, and it cannot be found valid by scientific experiment. It's, a, it's more of a way to conduct yourself or a way to think about something. We're going to look at a few of those principles throughout this physics course. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Check back for more of these physics videos. There's going to be a lot of them coming out soon. This is Falconator, signing out.